What's going on YouTube? This is Ribo at the bench and let me adjust the camera to try and get these things lined up evenly. There we go. Uh, this is Ribo at the bench and today we are doing another cut or carry knife review looking at the CRKT Chehalem. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I'm going to guess that I'm not uh, because that is just an interesting word, but uh, CRKT Chihalem. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, Cricut design, fairly new. Um, this is all steel construction with an 8CR13MOV blade. Please don't act surprised. Uh, I know that's very out of characteristic for Cricut. Um, you have this open hole deployment. You have this very, very nice hollow ground uh, blade um, with this beautiful curve. Uh, and then you have this really interesting handle that has this kind of um, hammered look, uh, this peened uh, finish, which is very interesting, and uh, probably I love it or hate it. Fold over deep carry pocket clip, over travel stop, frame lock, and you get all this for $30, $35. That is just insane. Um, this is a really, really interesting knife, and I'm very excited to review it. All right, let's do our size checks. Uh, so, I mean, this is going to be a heavy knife for what you're getting uh, because this is uh, heavy material, so four ounces on a small knife. And for those four ounces, if we do our size check, sharpened blade length, you're looking at about two and a half inches in the pocket, 3.67, and then a fairly thin uh, handle material of 0.4 inches, which is nice. Uh, so it's heavy-ish for the size, but it's not, uh, you know, it's not unrealistic. Uh, so no, no huge issues there. Okay, let's talk about things that I like about this knife. Honestly, I like a lot about this knife. So uh, let's start with the handles um, or the scales or, you know, whatever, the, the frame. Um, so this is a frame lock. Uh, you have this really, really cool design. I love it. Um, you know, granted, it's the same mold, I'm sure, for every knife, but it looks like it's... Um, done by hand and it just looks very, very cool. Uh, I, you know, this is a love it or hate it thing I would imagine, but man, do I really like this. I think this is just something you don't see all the time. It's not really gimmicky to me, but I think it just looks really, really nice. You can kind of see where this has been applied in some ways, uh, where maybe they have sheets of this stuff and then they're, they're, uh, kind of applying this onto the straight steel liner or straight steel, uh, frame. Uh, so, I mean, that does kind of give you some indication of the quality, if you can see that right there. But, I mean, for 30 bucks, I who cares? Like, I, it's just, you're never going to really notice that from afar. And honestly, you're a knife guy. No one else is ever going to notice that. Other things that I like, uh, the fold-over deep carry clip is excellent. Uh, there's one issue with it I'll talk about later, but otherwise it is phenomenal. This is the type of clip that I wish uh, more people would use. Uh, just, you know, you have recessed screws in there. Uh, just really awesome. Uh, really, really great job. Um, other things that I like, I like the thinness, um, 0.4 inches, I think is really, oh, wow, uh, is really good. Uh, I also love the backspacer. You have enough of kind of the jimping coming out of the handle here where it's helpful, but it's not hurting you. Uh, it's not too aggressive. I think it looks really nice. Just a really, really good, good job on that backspacer. Um, other things that I like, I really like the whole deployment here. Now, uh, there are other knives that I have. Um, do I have any with me? Yeah. So, uh, here's one. So the Real Steel Citus. Um, I think I sold my K-Bar Dozier, the, the Precision Hunter that had the same thing. Um, I don't think I have anything else. But um, these, you know, if, if not done by Spyderco, these, these hole deployments can be really hit or miss. Um, this one's a hit to me. It, it's big enough. Uh, it's it's um, sharp enough here where I can reliably catch my finger uh, really with no issues at all. It's far enough away from the handle material to allow me to do that. Um, and so it's very reliable. It's fairly easy to do. Um, I know some people can flick this. Uh, I can do it uh, sometimes. I can kind of do this flick occasionally. I'm not even, yeah. Okay, there we go. That was ugly. Um, but uh, so it can be flicked open. It's a small knife. So I, I tend to have a little bit of trouble with that. Um, but you do have the nice kind of gentleman open. And I think that that's been very, very reliable. And so that that's nice. So I do like the, the whole deployment. I also think that the the hole, which to me, like, does not fit on the Precision Hunter at all. Um, in terms of design, I think aesthetically it looks very nice on here. So that's really, really cool. Other things that I like, uh, finally, the blade. I mean, this is, I, I really like this. This is a hollow ground, um, kind of a clip point slash drop point. I don't really know what you would call this. Um, 
but uh, really interesting blade, and I, I think it looks really, really cool. This is just something that you don't see a lot, um, and I think it's very, very well done. Now, this is not going to be the most slicey knife. This is fairly thick material. It's not super thin down here, but, you know, honestly, for me, this is what I would call a niche knife. This is not going to be an everyday carry, my primary knife. Um, this is going to be a knife that I carry when I know I need to open boxes or, you know, that kind of thing. Not really going to be a kitchen knife. Um, but uh, it's, you know, definitely going to be capable of what you need it, need it to do. Um, this uh, is also, I think, just a very nice looking knife, and it has a very nice forward finger choil, um, which I think works very, very, very well. Um, the Civivi Hooligan has this kind of fake forward finger choil that doesn't work to me. Uh, this one works really, really well. It's very natural. You get uh, all of your fingers on the knife, and it's a very small knife. Um, and really, once you're doing that, the only thing that's exposed, exposed is, the, uh, is the sharpened blade length, which I think is just exactly what you want on a knife. Uh, very chaparral-esque in that way. All right, is that it? I think that's it. Overall, just like the knife works to me. This, this works in a lot of ways that crickets usually don't, and so I like that a lot. This, this punch is well above its, its price range, in my opinion, uh, in terms of the design aesthetic of the knife um, and the utility, honestly. Um, things that I don't like, to, like, oh, I'm sorry, one other thing that I love is the over-travel stop. I think I mentioned that at the beginning, but I forgot to talk about that. That is something you very, very, very rarely see in a knife under $70, $100, honestly. Um, that is really, really sweet. Um, plus, you have a fairly thin frame right here, so you can definitely, you know, and I've had this happen on, on the, uh, the rake that I had before, the 801, I think, um, where the, uh, the over-travel actually contributed to bad lockup. Um, that is really, really awesome that you're getting an over-travel stop, and you can probably see that right there. Uh, and so if you aren't familiar with an over-travel stop, basically um, you have that little piece of metal, which you can see right there, um, and that is just preventing you, once you're pushing that scalloped edge to take the knife down, that is just preventing you from pushing it too far out and bending the steel outwards so that you preserve kind of the springiness of that steel for when you open the knife and it locks up like that. That is something that you just typically don't get on a knife of this uh, price point, and you typically don't get on like a Cricut knife. Um, and so that is just really, really sweet. It's an added detail I didn't notice till later, but man, does that really just up the, uh, the quality feel of the knife. Um, things I don't like, only a couple things. Um, one, see if I can grab my handkerchief real quick and demonstrate this. So there's an issue where on this relief of the, um, of the, uh, the frame lock here, uh, it's right where the pocket clip comes down. And so what I've noticed on certain pants is that when I'm pushing this guy down, it has a tendency to catch right there on the edge of that uh, relief. And so sometimes I've found this knife actually sticking like that in the pocket and it's you know kind of been a little bit frustrating because i feel like i'm about to lose the knife now if you pay attention it, it goes in just fine i don't really have it coming out at all um, and it honestly carries very very well that way um, but uh, that is something to kind of keep in mind uh, it's not a great thing it's more of a minor annoyance and just something you have to consciously think about which is uh, unfortunate but not terrible uh, 8CR 13 MOV is always going to be my gripe with, with CRKT. Um, you can also see the blade centering is a little bit off, which has never been a huge deal to me, but, uh, you know, honestly speaks to quality control. Um, but, uh, yeah, 8CR 13 MOV, that's kind of what you've come to expect from CRKT. <sighs> Very frustrating in a knife like this because, man, this is such a nice knife. And if this were offered in a nicer steel, they could really charge a, a decent bit of money for this knife uh, and I think do very, very well. So that is super frustrating. Um, I wish there was a little bit of jimping on some some of these parts. I mean, the the, the blade and the, the handle don't line up perfectly here. You can kind of see that. So when you are holding it, you do feel that a little bit. I wish there was some jimping there. I wish maybe... Uh, no, I don't. Uh, otherwise, it's fine. Um, and then the only other thing is out of the box, mine came fairly stiff. Uh, I talked to another buddy who has one and his came perfect out of the box. Mine was fairly stiff. I played around with the pivot and got it, you know, very nice, but it looks like I've, I've managed to get that blade off center when I've screwed with the pivot. Um, but uh, the action is very nice now. So, I mean, it just, you know, it speaks to the, the fact that it's a $30, $35 knife. 
Uh, but that's it. So uh, kind of takeaways on the knife. This is a strong carry to me. I love this knife. This is awesome. Um, to me, this is my favorite CRKT I've ever owned. Um, this will be one staying in the collection, and I cannot say the same about any other CRKT, um, at least not any that I have tried recently. Um, this punches well above its weight in a lot of ways. And honestly, steel choice is really the one major downfall of the knife, which, you know, is what you come to expect. It's not terrible for the price. It's it's fine for the price. But, man, this is such a nice knife, such a good design. And some of the details are just really, really nice that this, this could be something really special. Um, I really love this knife. I do wish they offered it in some other steels. Uh, but, man, do I really like this knife. Definitely not a primary carry knife. Um, but definitely one that's been in the pocket more than I expected and is not going anywhere. So if you have not uh, had a chance to check out the CRKT Chehalem, I highly recommend it, especially when you can get it at this price. Uh, I think that it is a very undervalued or underrated Cricut design uh, and something that's definitely worth your time. Plus, you got kind of the moon look going on here. So there you go. All right, hope you've enjoyed this review, and I'll see you next time.